All right. Well, thank you guys for coming. Uh, today we're going to be going over the four secret places that you can find the best assistance to support your business. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. We'll be doing a Q&A at the end. Um, so I'll be checking that at that time. Uh, so just some little etiquette um, and just make sure you get the most out of this class. Be sure to grab a pen, notebook if you want to take any notes or jot anything down. Uh, turn off your phone just to avoid any kind of distractions. You can focus and really make the most of our time together. Um, and again, just any questions, just go ahead and put them in the chat. Love to answer them. Any, ask anything you want. Um, and just be sure to keep yourself on mute when you're not speaking. Um, so a really big question you might have is, you know, why would you might even want to hire an assistant? Um, this next year is coming up really fast. Um, so a big thing that I think is a great selling point for why we would want to have an assistant of any kind. Um, as you as a business owner, if you know, if you could earn $100 or $200 an hour, um, it doesn't really make sense if you're going to be doing tasks that you could outsource for just $5 to $15 an hour. This is a really great way to increase your profits if you're able to focus your time doing those things that really require you, such as like sales or just anything that really is bringing a lot more revenue in. Um, some examples of things that you might be able to outsource might be appointment setting, answering the phone, editing any video or photos, or just sending emails. Um, so, so those are some examples there. Um, and just a reminder, if you stay to the end, we will be doing that uh, question and answers, and then I will be doing a giveaway as well. Uh, so just a little bit about me, if we haven't met before, uh, for somebody on the replay that doesn't know me, I know you guys know me really well, <laughs> uh, but I actually had my first job when I was just eight years old. Uh, my sister and I were, would actually go clean our neighbor's house, and she paid us minimum wage, which was $5 an hour at the time. Uh, but my mom uh, couldn't afford to give us an allowance, so it kind of helped us just have a little spending money. Um, and then my first like major career really was banking. I did that for over 12 years. Um, and then I headed into e-commerce, and that was when I really found entrepreneurship that it, things could actually be successful. I ended up growing a six-figure business in just nine months, and that was back in uh, 2016. And then a few years later, I got into digital marketing and built my agency, which I still run today. Um, and then just like a reminder, you know, life is too short. Uh, that's actually why I got out of corporate America was like, life's too short to be miserable. Remember to have fun. I do what I do now because it's fun. Um, so I think it's a good reminder, you know, don't take things too seriously um, and just try and have fun. Do what, do what you love. And then my family as well. So in the right there is my husband and I. We went to the Painted Hills here in Oregon uh, at the beginning of the year. And then my lower area is my uh, fur kids. Uh, so I've got Buddy, my dog, and Mr. Cuddles, our cat. They're both rescues. Um, and yeah, they bring a lot of joy for us. Um, so let's go ahead and just dump, jump right in. Uh, so where should you find your best assistance, both locally and around the world? So my first favorite place for a local person is actually I've had really good success using just Facebook. I love Facebook. I think all of you guys that are here know me from Facebook. Um, and so a great my go to place if you're local to me is the Hillsborough Classifieds group. It has over 33,000 members in it. Um, I've had a lot of really good success with that. So if you're not local, um, something that you can do, there's usually a classified group near you. Um, and um, yeah, that can be a really great thing. It's also free, so you can't, can't beat that. An example of me using Facebook, when I hired my very first person, they were local. Uh, it was back when I had my Amazon business. Um, and I just needed a little bit of help. And I was actually surprised that this person took the job, but I just needed somebody two hours a week and I paid her $15 an hour. Um, and that was back when in 2017, when minimum wage was $12 an hour. So I was more than minimum wage. So she liked that. And I also was like, you know, what is it worth that person's time to come to my house? Um, and she was a stay at home mom. She hadn't worked in a while and her, I think her work confidence was pretty low. She took it like really seriously. She was always on time. Uh, she ended up being a really great employee. So it was kind of a cool experience for both of us. And just like how she grew over the year that we worked together. 
Uh, she went from like taking the bus to being able to buy a car and just uh, I think her family's life is a lot better now, which was really cool to see. So you don't always know the impact that you're going to have on those people too that you hire. Uh, so if you can find them on Facebook, another great place is Craigslist. So sometimes you'll post on Facebook and maybe you're just not getting that response. It's another great uh, place to try is Craigslist. Um, I like what I like about Craigslist is you can really categorize what you're looking for. So there's different things that people might look look at. Um, maybe it's administrative, maybe it's you know contractor based. Uh, you can do that there and you can also post really easily like what you're going to pay them so people can get a good idea for that as well. So they know if it's something that might interest them. Um, it's also my favorite place for like buying and selling cars or just random household items. So I do love Craigslist for that too. I know Facebook Marketplace is getting more popular, but it seems like there's just a different kind of people that hang out, hang out on either of these places. So it just kind of depends on what you're looking for. So those are more for the past two are more for like the in-person, not that you can't hire people that can do just online based doesn't have to be location based, but um, those are more of my go-tos for in-person. Uh, my next two are going to be, so this third one is Fiverr. Um, and this one I've used uh, mostly for logos, um, but this one can be really great if you're like actually just kind of shopping for what you need. So, you know, you need a logo design. Uh, you can have people that offer that specific service. Uh, same for video editing and photo editing, and you can usually pay them probably five or ten dollars uh, for the whole project. Whereas if you, you know, for logo design, for example, here in the U.S., you're probably going to pay five hundred dollars. Versus if you want somebody to make a simple logo for you, you could probably get that for five dollars on on Fiverr. Uh, one time, I back in, I feel like I've had so many businesses <laughs> over the years, uh, but one of my businesses, my uh, brand was Busy Becca which was kind of cute. So I did like a B and I needed something custom. And so I was able to go on uh, Fiverr and have them kind of take my vision and make it a real life thing. Uh, they do give you an option to give them a tip. So if they do a really good job, just remember they are a person and, you know, give them an extra $5 or so. They really appreciate it. Um, and something else I've outsourced is like, if you want to take a photo and make that into a cartoon, that can be really fun. And I have no idea how to do that. So it's really great that instead of learning how to do that, um, I could just hire somebody, pay them $5 and have that done. So my next um, place where you can go, and this is my favorite, it's Upwork. Um, I use this the most. Uh, you can use it for both small and long-term projects. It's also great too, because maybe you have like, you just want a video edited. Uh, so you can just say, this is gonna be a short-term project you know, again, $5. Uh, and then you end up really liking that person. And then you, you know, you maybe want to give them another video editing project to do, and you can kind of build that with them. Um, and at the same time, if it's just a one time thing, and you didn't really care for them, you know, you could just say, yeah, I just need to do that one time. And it's not a big deal. And it's not like that if you have an in person employee, right, you don't want to hurt their feelings. Um, but yeah, so it's a little bit more impersonal, or it can be if it's just a project. Um, I also love that with Upwork, it's a platform that really protects your privacy and it's a safe way to pay and communicate. So that was really big for me when I first started. As I'm like, I don't want to get scammed. How do I pay these people that are in a different country? What if they, I don't know, fraud, take advantage of me? I don't know. There can be a lot of fears when it comes to that. And with Upwork, you everything you do is with their platform. Uh, so it's really, it makes you feel safe. Their fees can be a bit high, especially for the freelancers that you're hiring. But if things go well, you can always hire them off of Upwork and that, that can save you both money long term. Um, but for, I'd say, the first six months to a year, I would stick to just using that platform of Upwork and just makes me personally feel safer. Uh, they also have a chat built into their system. So you communicate with them right there. Super easy. Um, I even have it, I don't think I set anything up, it just does it automatically Upwork. If I miss a conversation, they'll email me and I can actually email them back like on my phone and it doesn't look like I, it looks like I actually sent it in their chat platform. Uh, so it just makes it really easy for me to stay in communication with all of my uh, virtual assistants. Uh, and then you can also set your price right there on Upwork. So the expectations are there. You know, I've only have a budget for $30 or $5 an hour, $10 an hour, whatever you'd like. 
And then you can also decide on the location. So if you do need somebody that is in the United States, you can do that. Uh, if you need somebody, like maybe you have a preference for working for some from the Philippines, uh, you can put that preference in there as well. Uh, so some jobs that I've hired for on Upwork. Uh, so my first one or two was for SEO, and I actually realized that was a really bad idea. Um, so I was trained on SEO, and I didn't know that there was a lot of versions of SEO. One's called like White Hat, Black Hat, and so there's some really like in like fishy things that can go on with SEO that Google actually really does not like. And so I actually realized that was a bad task to outsource. Um, and what I ended up actually doing was finding an experienced virtual assistant that didn't have any experience and then training them the way that I like to do it. Um, and then people are really eager to learn. Again, you can get them for sometimes even $3 an hour if they're really kind of interning for you. And they work really hard and they might be able to turn into a really great assistant. Uh, web designers, so those are great. Some people specialize on different platforms, like some people really like WordPress, some people really like Wix. Um, so if there's something specific, you can usually find somebody, and those are really inexpensive as well. Uh, website coders, so sometimes I have a client that wants something really complicated, and I have no idea how to do it, but I'm able to say yes to them because I can go on Upwork and find somebody to do it. Uh, so, for example, you know, I might get paid, I might charge $300 for an entire page that needs coding, and then I can outsource that for $50. Um, so that can work really well. So just anything that you don't know how to do, it kind of helps to be able to say yes more to your clients. Um, it's really inexpensive options, too. Could be anything Photoshop related. Uh, if you need something like the image resize, if you're doing some screen printing uh, or just need something in a different format, you can get somebody to convert that for you. Uh, if you want any copywriting or editing, proofreading, sometimes social media can be really good. Um, and then also, if you do need a U.S.-based virtual assistant, you can find those on Upwork. They're going to be a little more expensive because our cost of living is more expensive. Um, but but it's nice that you have that option as well. Sometimes you just need you need that maybe for phone answering or you just need something specific um, that they need to be based here. You can have that, that have that done. Um, I did want to like just let you know if I do have that free guide if you're interested. If um, you go to my website, it's right there on the top right hand corner. So if you haven't grabbed a copy of that yet, um, definitely my gift to you. Um, yeah, uh, so just so now that you have those four different places to look for, I just wanted to let you know I am hosting another free master class that's going to be next week. Um, we're going to be covering same time how to write a job description that gets noticed. I know a lot of people can struggle with that. Sometimes it holds them up. They don't really know what to say, or maybe their post isn't getting the attention you wish it would. Um, and then I am also going to be launching a course that's just going to be a four week course um, beginning of next year. Um, it's going to be packed full of video trainings, workbook. We're going to have a free Facebook group where you can go ask questions. So as you're going through the process of trying to find your virtual assistant, you can pop in there and ask your questions. Um, it is going to be a closed course, so you can't sign up after January 8th. Um, we're just going to be focusing on working together and making sure everybody's successful. And a little sneak peek more about what's going to be in that um, is we're going to be, I'm going to help you decide what to outsource first. So really take something off your plate that's really going to impact your business in a positive way. And then how much to pay your virtual assistant, that could be a huge thing. So you don't want to pay them too much, but you also want to make sure you're getting the quality that your business really needs. Um, and then also how to train them. That can be the hugest thing. A lot of people are not successful because their training is just not in place. Um, and maybe they don't have that, you know, system op operating procedures down. So it's really hard for them to explain how to do things well in their business, what tasks to take over. All right, so we're going to go ahead and do our giveaway. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen real quick so I can hop over. I've got this wheel spinner with, with names in it. Um, all right. All right. So 
Okay, I'll start sharing again, <laughs> make that announcement. All right, so it uh, looks like our winner today is Nikki. Congratulations. Congratulations, <laughs> Nikki. Oh, so I'll connect with you and, and get you your planner. All right, and now's our Q&A. So what kind of, what, uh, feel free to unmute yourself if you have a question and then I'll uh, peek in the chat here too. All right, so yeah, any questions that you might have, just let me know. I have, well, two that I can think of, and one is, can we share our business information in the chat here? Yeah, if you'd like to, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to get to know everybody a little bit better and share mine. Um, and then I wanted to ask about the Hillsborough Classifieds. Um, that seems like a no-brainer, but uh, you know, you have some insights into my businesses. You know them. Um, should I be using them? Yeah, that could actually be a really great. So if you don't know Brian, uh, he does real estate, but he also has a painting business. And so if you're looking for more painters, more contract uh, labor people, um, that could be a great place to find them. And just posting Thanks. about what you do. I know Remy, he does he does tires um, and he posts a lot in there too. So it might be a good place to just share, you know, if you've got any specials going on or uh, maybe before and after pictures of um, your painting projects to try and get some more business there. There's a lot of people in that group, so it's good to utilize Facebook for things like that. Okay. So Facebook Marketplace and oh right, it's it's a Hillsborough Classifieds is a mm -hmm. group on Facebook. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um, okay. somebody messaged me before and they asked, uh, they couldn't attend live, but they asked, you know, what types of tasks should I not be outsourcing? Um, so I just wanted to answer that real quick. So things that you shouldn't be outsourcing are really things that really need you. Um, so for an example, for me with my SEO business, I really wanted to outsource the, I create like a monthly report for them and it can be really tedious. And so I thought, oh, I should outsource that. But that's actually when I really go through the process and I really think about their business and what strategy should be we, we be doing moving forward. So I'm really helping to retain that client by putting in that time there. Um, and also I think for me, hopefully it helps, um, is like, and also like sales calls or just like building relationships with clients. You want if you know, that's important to your business and what you need to do. You want to make sure you're showing up for that. You don't want to, you know, if your business isn't that big yet, um, you want to be investing that time and not just having an assistant do that for you. Any other questions? I have one, Rebecca. When you're using a platform like Facebook or um, Craigslist, I think I'm specifically thinking of Facebook. Like if you put something in a group that you're looking for help with a project and you get 500 responses or even 50. Mm -hmm. How do you go through the process of vetting those? Because that can be quite overwhelming when you have a lot of responses, but you don't really have a lot of information on each person. Yeah, that's a good point. A very good question. So yeah, that's actually a kind of a con. It depends on what you need, uh, what task you're trying to outsource. But sometimes you're not going to want to use Facebook because I'll get spammed. Like my direct messages will just blow up. <laughs> Okay. With so many people that want to, you know, they, they, I don't know why they think it's helpful. It sets them apart, but I'm like, um, a really great thing to do. And that maybe this ties into next week's course too. But, um, if you ask them to do something, it can kind of set them apart because some people aren't really even reading what you're posting. They're just like, oh, you want a virtual assistant? I can do that. Um, uh, but it's like, no, I really need somebody with copywriting experience. So maybe I want them to, um, redo, like proofread this uh, paragraph for me, or you know, I just want to like test their work a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and that's when Upwork can be a lot more beneficial is you can have that um, done there. And then it's easy. Hopefully that makes sense. Just kind of having something for them to do to know that they're paying attention and that they actually really want your job and they're not just throwing their name in, out there like random and kind of wasting your time. 
Yeah, that's such a great point. Um, can I ask one more follow-up question then? Yeah, I absolutely. Um, so when you're looking to hire somebody for help, do you find that the quality of help that you get is better off of a platform like Upwork versus Facebook or Craigslist? Uh, it just depends on what you're looking for and how much you're willing to pay them to. Um, cause it depends, like you're going to get a different quality if you're paying somebody brand new $5 an hour, like social media can be a good example of this. Um, everybody thinks that they can do social media. Um, but when it comes down to it, like you get some pretty interesting, <laughs> um, posts. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. And so, yeah, this one person that I worked with, uh, she didn't have very much experience, but she was so trainable. There's the sweetest person from Upwork. I think, uh, she was willing to work for $3 an hour. And I was like, sure, let's try it. Um, and I tried to transition her to social media because the first thing I outsourced with her was a logo design. I think she was able to put it in Photoshop and clean it up and kind of redo it uh, for a client of mine. And I was like, oh, you, you're, you know, you've got that designer mentality. Let's do it. And um, so she did a social media post for me and it was like the most inappropriate thing I've ever seen. <laughs> I was like, I don't know how you think that's funny. <laughs> I didn't say that to her. Um, but, you know, sometimes you just got to be aware of those kind of red flags where it's like, okay, this is not the good fit for them. Um, so I think, and trying to, another good point um, that hopefully is helpful is trying to look through what you can do on Upwork is like their um, their past projects that they've worked on. You know, if they've done a website, make have them send you that link. You know, what does that website look like? Great. And and hopefully it's accurate. <laughs> uh, yeah. And something else I've learned too is to if it's, especially if it's Upwork or you can do it too if it's just from Facebook or something is you know okay I'm only going to let's just start with ten hours and let's see what work we can get done. Um, and that gives you an idea of you know how quickly do they work how how honest are they because that's another thing too. Um, another bad experience is sometimes I had somebody really take advantage of me because I allowed them on Upwork to work up to 40 hours. And so they created work for themselves. Like they made the tasks harder. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that did not end well. <laughs> uh, and yeah, so, so that's, you got to kind of, and so when you do find somebody that you can really trust and then does good quality of work, you really want to hold on to those people. Yeah. To take good care of them. Oh, well, yeah. thank you. This, this was so helpful. I really, I learned a lot. So thank you for this information and for answering my questions. Oh, good. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Yeah. I think it's a little bit of a shorter course but, or a master class, but that's okay. Does anybody else have any questions? Something, um, maybe I'll just, I'll just pick on you guys. <laughs> so, um, so something like for Remy, for example, you know, as your business grows, um, having somebody answer your phone, like for, especially for contractors, you want, you always want people to think you're available and that you have time to help them. Um, so if you, if phones are a big deal for you, having a phone service or sometimes phone services can actually be kind of expensive. They can be like five or $10 a call. Um, so if you're getting enough, it could be worth it to go ahead and outsource to a virtual assistant that is just charging you maybe a dollar a call or something like that. Yeah, I think that's the first thing I was thinking about is somebody helping with phone calls. Um, when I when I really get busy to where um, phone calls become annoying and distracting from me working, then yeah, I definitely uh, I'll think about that. But so far, I, I handle it. Um, so yeah, maybe next year. Yeah, that'd be great. What about for you, Nikki? Is there any like area of your business where you think an assistant would help you or will in the future as you grow? Yeah, I think with emails, um, that's part where I get a little bit overwhelmed. And because I'm running two other businesses, that's why I'm interested in, you know, looking at these options for a VA. Um, one of the other questions I have, and you might cover this in another master course, but are there any tax implications? Yeah, that's a great question. So that's actually another really great benefit is because virtual assistants are independent contractors. Um, you don't have to really keep track of um, doing those um, 
the W-2s or W-4s. <laughs> uh, you don't really have to send them those like you would at uh, with a U.S.-based contractor, which is really great. They're responsible for their own taxes if they're in a different country or if you're doing it through Upwork. So you can just like in your QuickBooks online, it's just uh, an expense. It's not a contractor if it's through this way. But if you take them off of like an Upwork platform or if you hire them on Facebook, then you do have to think about those things and talk to your accountant about that. Great, thank you. All right, you guys. Well, thank you so much for, for joining today. Um, I will be sending out a replay. Uh, feel free to share share this with anybody that you know that you think could benefit from it. And um, I'll also be in the email, I'll also send out um, a link where you can register for next week's class as well. So, all right, thank you so thank you. much. Thank you. Really thank, great. You. thank you. Thank you.